Hi everyone, I'm Alicia and I work at LACMA. Welcome to Andel Family Sundays at Home. I'm so pleased to introduce you to our new virtual programming for families. Hola, me llamo Alicia y trabajo en LACMA. Bienvenidos a Domingos en Familia Andel en Casa. Estoy muy contenta de introducir la nueva programación virtual para familias. Today, I am super thrilled to introduce Baba the Storyteller. Baba has picked out some very special stories and songs just for you about courage and migration. Hoy estoy super contenta de introducir a Baba el Cuentista. Baba ha escogido unos cuentos y canciones especialmente para ustedes sobre coraje y migración. Baba's storytelling craft is called Jalaya and it comes from West Africa. La forma de cuentos de Baba se llama Jalaya y viene de África Occidental. If you are joining us during the YouTube premiere, you can live chat in English and Spanish with Baba the Storyteller or myself. If you watch after the premiere, feel free to leave a comment. We love hearing from you. Si están con nosotros durante la premiere en YouTube, pueden hacer chat en vivo con Baba el Cuentista o conmigo. Si es después de la premiere, por favor deje un comentario. Nos encanta oír de nuestra audiencia. Land Acknowledgement LACMA respectfully acknowledges that the land in which our museum is built and the region that we serve is the traditional and unceded territory of the Tongva, Tatapiam, and Chumash people. Los Angeles County has been, and is, home to many indigenous peoples. As an art museum and a collecting institution, LACMA recognizes the role such institutions play in the continual displacement of indigenous peoples and is committed to working to dismantle the ongoing effects of this colonial legacy. I filmed this video from my home in the Eagle Rock neighborhood in Los Angeles on Tongva and Chumash land. Baba the Storyteller filmed from Long Beach, California on Tongva land. Now settle in for some storytelling. Ahora alístense para cuentos. Greetings one and all, I am Baba the Storyteller, and just in case you were wondering, Baba means father. For the past 30 years I've traveled all over the world teaching, sharing music and stories, which is what I want to do with you today. But I also want to celebrate a group of courageous people, whom I consider really courageous, people who set out against great odds to change their lives, to better themselves. When people set out in mass to places that they're not very familiar with to make better lives for themselves and their families, we call that movement of people migrations. There's one in particular that occurred from the early 1900s all the way into the early 70s. It was a migration of African Americans who left the South and they traveled up north to the northern cities. A lot of them ended up in New York and they were all seeking to make better their lives. This coming together of different people from different parts of the U.S. and having different customs even, well, it gave birth to the Harlem Renaissance. And I want to celebrate that because it takes a lot of courage to leave your home or, or your homeland and venture out into the unknown. Lion had been king of the jungle longer than anyone could remember. But on this day, all of the animals of the jungle were gathered outside of King Lion's cave. They were nervous. They heard something coming from King Lion's cave that they had never heard before. It was the sound of King Lion, and he was crying. 
Yes, no one had ever heard King Lion cry before, and this, this worried the animals. So they elected one among them to go and check on King Lion. None other than Monkey. Monkey went to the entrance of King Lion's cave and he said, King Lion, King Lion, all of the animals, they can hear you crying and they want to know what would make our king cry through his tears. Lion said, come in, Monkey, come in and I will tell you. So Monkey went into King Lion's cave. And King Lion said, Monkey, the reason why I I'm crying is because I've just discovered something about myself. And Monkey said, well, what is it? What have you discovered? And King Lion said, I've discovered that I'm a big scaredy cat. Monkey said, what do you mean? What are you afraid of? And then Lion explained that, he said, the other day I went down, Monkey, I went down to the lake to get a drink of water. And when I got there, there was another lion waiting for me. He was much bigger than me more fierce. When he looked at me, it just, it scared me. So Monkey, Monkey said, well, what did you do, King Lion? What did you do? And King Lion said, I turned around and I ran. Monkey could not believe his ears. This was not the King Lion that he knew, but he also knew that he couldn't go out to all the other animals and tell them that their king had run away from another lion. So he began to think. And then Monkey got an idea. He began to remind King Lion of things he had done in the past, telling him stories about himself. He reminded King Lion how much help he had been to all of the animals, how bravely he had fought when he needed to fight. And the more that Monkey talked, the braver King Lion got, until all of a sudden King Lion jumped up and ran out of the cave. Do you know where he was going? Yes, down to that lake to face that other lion. When King Lion got to the lake, he looked around, but that other lion was nowhere in sight. He was a bit relieved, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the other lion appeared but he was much bigger than King Lion remembered. King Lion, he wanted to turn and run, but he didn't. He looked that other lion in his eyes and stared. And the other lion looked King Lion in his eyes and stared. King Lion opened his mouth to roar and the other lion opened his mouth to roar. These two lions were facing off one another when King Lion he reminded himself that he was the king, the one and true king. So he stood up on his hind legs ready to end this. And when he did, that other lion stood up on his hind legs. King Lion, he didn't want to hesitate anymore. He needed to end this. So he leaped at the other lion and the other lion leaped at King Lion. So now you have these two lions flying toward one another. When all of a sudden, he doesn't know how it happened, but King Lion finds himself swimming in the deepest part of the lake. And King Lion can't swim so well. So he's swimming, trying to get out of the lake. And then when he finally makes it to the shore of the lake, he gets out, he shakes himself off, he looks around, and he discovers something. What he discovers is there never had been another lion. Nope. When King Lion had gone to the lake to get a drink of water initially, he had looked into the water and what he saw was not another lion. It was his own reflection. Right, so King Lion had been afraid of who? Himself. This is like all of us. Fear really starts within. And it takes a lot to conquer it. Courage is what it takes.
Thank you so much. I hope you all enjoyed that story. I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about courage and the type of courage it takes for people who leave their homes or their homelands to seek better opportunities elsewhere. These migrations are a really important part of our history. Let me explain why. Because you see, these migrations bring people together who usually would never have come together. And when we embrace those differences and we learn from one another, we grow. But we have to be willing to learn from one another. Which gives me an idea. Are you willing to learn something new? Let's see. I speak a West African language called the Bambara. I want to try to teach you a little bit. And let's see if you can repeat what I say. All right? Repeat this. Ye jalia. Alaleka. Jalia da. Not bad, not bad. You want to hear it one more time? Okay. Repeat. Ye jalia. Alaleka. Jalia da. It's that simple. It's that simple. These words belong to a song, a very ancient song called Lamba. I want to sing it for you, but just listen because I'm going to be asking you to sing back. We call that call and response. So listen. Yeah, Jalia. And then I'll have you guys sing back in time. Yeah, Jalia. Then I'll sing the second part. Alaleka Jalia da. And then I'll have you sing back. Alaleka Jalia da. Are you ready? Okay, let's try this. Let's try this. I'll sing first, and then I want you to sing back. And I'll sing under my breath a little bit just to help you out with the timing. So here we go. After me. Ye jalia. Ye jalia. Alaleka jalia da. Alaleka jalia da. You know what? I think you all have it. And I think we can do this. Let me play the music on my Cora. The Kora, which is an ancient harp out of West Africa that the oral historians or storytellers of Africa use to help tell their stories and their histories of their people. I'm going to play the Kora. Oh, I almost forgot something. I'm going to sing a whole lot of words you don't know. But when I get to the Ye Chalia, you be ready to sing back. Here we go. Ambia <laughs> Ambia sinana, kumbemba jali moza ninja lekel. Ambia sinana. Okay, after me. Let me hear you, nice and loud. Here we go. Ye jalia, alaleka jalia da. One more time. Ye jalia, alaleka jalia da. You're doing good. Ambia sinana, kumbemba jali musa ninja lekel. Ambia sinana. A farmer was walking along the base of a mountain one day. When he happened upon a strange looking egg, he picked the egg up and he put it in his satchel. The farmer walked back to his farm and he took the egg, walked into the hen house, and he put the egg beneath one of the hens so that it could be hatched. Well, that hen sat on that egg for a really long time. There were other eggs hatching all the time. Other eggs came and they hatched beautiful little baby chicks, but this one, no, it didn't hatch. 
ye jaliya ala le ka jaliya da now eventually after a long 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 time it it did hatch but what came out of this egg did not look like a little baby chick no not at all it was a bird but it was long and gangly with the biggest feet of any bird you've ever seen and it didn't have a beak like the other baby chicks its beak was curved on the end but that mother hen loved it just the same even though it was different she loved it she tried to teach it how to peck the ground for food and how to navigate the barnyard by walking around But every time this little odd bird would try to peck the ground, well, she couldn't get enough food because her beak was shaped differently. She couldn't quite navigate the barnyard as well as the other baby chicks because those really big feet. Yeah, Jalia. Alaleka Jalia da. Well, one day this odd bird was out pecking the ground trying to get some seed to eat. When she looked up in the air and she saw something way in the sky she noticed another bird a very majestic bird its wingspan was huge soaring through the air she yelled out look 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 and she was pointing up to the sky the mother hen came running out and she said what are you yelling about what are you screaming and the odd bird said look The mother hen looked up and she saw the huge majestic bird flying in the sky and she shook her head and she said Don't worry about those birds who fly high in the sky. They're not like us. We're chickens. You need to continue learning how to peck the ground because I don't want you to starve. You need to continue learning how to walk around in the barnyard because I want you to be able to get places. And the mother hen walked away telling the odd bird just to forget about what she saw. But do you think that odd bird could forget about what she saw? No, she couldn't. Yeah, Jalia. Ala leka Jalia da. No, she couldn't. She couldn't forget about what she had seen. And then one day, she was out pecking the ground looking at all the other little baby chicks when all of a sudden she got an idea the odd bird got an idea as she was pecking the ground something came over her so she walked to the back of the hen house she climbed up the back of the hen house to the roof of the hen house and then she walked across the roof of the hen house all the other baby chicks they stopped pecking the ground and they looked up at her and they wondered what is she doing up there without a word she stood at the edge of the roof and then she jumped and do you know what happened no she fell and she hit the ground really hard and it hurt all of the baby chicks started screaming what are you doing have you lost your mind why would you do that and they all ran off to get the mother hens well the odd bird was laying on the ground thinking and then she got up and she dusted herself off went to the back of the hen house again climbed up the back of the hen house but this time she did something different yes this time When she got to the roof of the hen house instead of walking across the roof she ran as fast as she could and when she got to the edge of the roof she leaped off of the roof and do you know what happened this time No no she fell again she fell but this time because she had been running so fast so hard when she fell it hurt even worse it hurt all over but then she got up dusted herself off. Yeah, you guessed it. <laughs> she walked back around to the back of the hen house, climbed up onto the roof of the hen house, but she had a different plan in mind. You see, this time, she ran as fast as she could across the roof, and when she got to the edge of the roof, she leaped off of the roof, but this time when she leaped off of the roof, she opened up her 
And do you know what happened this time? She flew. And she was going higher and higher and higher. When the mother hen came running and when the mother hen saw her, the mother hen smiled. She looked up at her odd little bird flying higher and higher. And she said to her, she said to her, when you were born, I knew there was something special about you. When you were born, you were different than everyone else. And that's a good thing. The mother hen looked up at her and the mother hen said, I always knew you were born to fly. Lower. Whisper. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I enjoyed telling it to you. Once again, courage, coming together, accepting. That little bird, I know she probably suffered a little feeling so different than everyone else. But it's those differences that make us special. And what makes us even more special is accepting of those differences. I honestly believe that this is what gave birth to the intellectual outpour, the, the intense creativity of the Harlem Renaissance when the Great Migration occurred. In fact, there's one more thing I'd like to do before I let you go. I have a poet, one of my favorite poets during the Harlem Renaissance. His name is Langston Hughes. And he has a poem that I would love to share with you. Do you have a poet that you love? A poem that you love to repeat? Well, if you don't, you should. And I'll tell you what, before I share my poem, let me just give you a little assignment. I want you to go find a poem that you enjoy, that makes you feel good and memorize that poem. And then share your poem with others, like I'm about to share mine with you. The poem by Langston Hughes that I want to share with you, that I want to close our time together with is called The Negro Speaks of Rivers. Listen carefully. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile, and I raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. And I've seen it, its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Thank you for your time.